The particular visions that I want to talk about, these are the, um, I call them the white door visions. So I've talked about these recently. I've made a bunch of videos about these. And uh, so this is the thumbnail of the most recent one. So it was a couple of weeks ago that I posted this. Okay, so these white door visions, these were visions that I had um, starting in August of last year. And uh, I had these visions over and over and over and over again. It got to the point where it was almost driving me crazy. <laughs> in May of this year. And I probably had these every single Sunday. And so I would always have them at church. And so the church I was going to at the time was this really, really big church in Branson, Missouri. And so they, they meet in this big, huge auditorium. And so I would always have this vision of this big white door kind of up above the stage area. And so this big, huge white door, and it was surrounded by angels. Um, so I'm not going to tell you all the details about it now. If you want to know more details, you can look up these videos that I've made. Uh, they're on my YouTube channel. So, But let me tell you very quickly about the vision. So I would see this white door surrounded by angels. The angels would be looking at me. And so when I have a vision and I see angels and they're looking at me, um, I usually that means that God wants to tell me, show me something, uh, tell me something. And so that was indeed true of these white door visions. So that was it. It was a really simple vision that I had over and over and over again. And sometime during the vision, there would always be this moment where the angels would crack open that door. And I could see when they cracked open the door, I could see the glory of God on the other side of the door. And when they cracked open the door, the glory of God would stream out. You know, and there's no no mistaking the glory of God. I see it in visions a lot. And it's just it's it, you, it's tangible. I mean, it surrounds you, and you know, and it would come out. But then they would slam the door shut immediately. And so I would only get this little moment to see the glory of God on the other side of the door. And this happened over and over and over and over again. It was almost like they were teasing me, you know, because I could see the glory of God on the other side of the door. I want that door opened. I want the glory of God to be able to descend upon the room where I was to be able to just come out in this full glory and, and to, to just descend upon us and, and to be able to just flow out into, into the world. Um, and so I would ask God over and over and over again, God, what are you trying to show me? Why isn't this door open? When is this door going to open? How is this door going to open? And um, so eventually, over time, God would tell me a little bit more, a little bit more. So he eventually revealed to me that he was waiting for us for this door to open. He was waiting for us. He was waiting for like a um, critical mass of us, of believers in Jesus Christ to get on our knees, to cry out to God, to seek God, to throw away all of the uh, the, um, the idols and wickedness of our culture that, that the church has embraced and to, to worship God and to seek him as hard as we can. God wants to, just as he resurrected, physically resurrected the body of Christ, when Jesus was here, he wants to spiritually resurrect his bride, the body of Christ now, which is us, the believe, the church, the believers in Jesus Christ. And um, so, and this is a very biblical idea. So then the door would be open, that the glory of God would be able to descend upon us in full force. This is a very biblical idea because this is the way God always worked with the Israelites throughout the Old Testament. So if you've read the Old Testament, you know that the Israelites would start falling away from God. They would start uh, they would start adopting the pagan practices of the people who lived around them. They would start worshiping the idols of the pagan people who lived all around them. And as they started doing this and rejecting God, then God would slowly lift up his protective hand. He would slowly stop blessing them. And when he did that, then they, their enemies would come in and they would attack and defeat them and bad things would happen to them. And when it got bad enough, then enough, uh, then the, the, the Jewish people, the Israelites would turn back to God and start crying out to him and start worshiping him again and throw away all their idols. And when enough of them did that, then God would come in and intervene and he would, uh, he would save them from the enemies and he would start blessing them again. And so in the Old Testament, we see this pattern over and over and over and over again. And, and sometimes when you're reading it, you're like, come on, Israelites, do you have to keep making the same mistake over and over again? But yet we, the body of Christ, we're in the middle of the same thing. That pattern, the same pattern is happening to us over and over and over and over again. We just don't see it because all we are comparing it to is our short little life, you know, 80, 80 years, how, however long you're going to live here. 
uh, or however long you've been alive. You know, that's all you know. But we, because what we see in the Old Testament is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of the Israelites going through this pattern. So if you look through the history of the church, you're going to see that same pattern that, you know, in the good times, that's when we fall away from God. And we start adopting, you know, the luxuries and all of the idols of, of, of the people around us, the culture around us. Um, you know, look at that. You can see it happening now in the Western church. You know, we have been, it's not everybody. Some of us are really, really serious about God. You know, we're on our face and praying to him every day. But, but generally, I think that you can't deny that the Western church has uh, adopted uh, so much of the idolatry of our wicked culture. We worship, uh, we worship money. We worship fame, the praise of man. We worship our flesh. We worship entertainments. Um, there's so many ways that we have just, we've just embraced and adopted the culture, the idols of the modern day idols of the culture around us. And so that's what God is, is telling us to do. Throw all that stuff away, get serious about me again, cry out to me, come back to me. And so he has been, I believe God has been lifting up his hand of protection over us. I'm not just talking about our country. I'm talking about the church all over the world. And as he does that, then we see the wickedness around us start to increase. You know, and we start to get enslaved in various ways, um, just like what happened to the Israelites. And so I think that's what God is calling us to do. Um, so I think that's the message of these white door visions.